Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Are we happy to be in the presence of the Lord? Amen. Ask your neighbor and say, neighbor, are you ready for what God is about to do in your life today? Neighbor, are you about to <coughs> ready for what God is about to do? For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever. Can you clap your hands, somebody, and give God the glory? Father, we thank you, we glorify you, we give you praise. Thank you for your grace. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. Firstly, I'd love to thank Mommy and Daddy for trusting me with their pulpit and giving me this opportunity to share the word of the Lord with you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What a beautiful day it is. Hallelujah. Tell your neighbor and say, are you ready for what God is about to do? Hallelujah. Can we open our Bibles in the book of Ezekiel? Ezekiel 37 from verse 1 to verse 14. Are you already there, somebody? Can I read with you? Can I read? Ezekiel 37, verse 1 to 14, it reads, the, the hand of the Lord was upon me, and he brought me out in the spirit of the Lord and sent, set me down in the middle of the valley, and it was full of bones. He caused me to pass all around them, and behold, there were very many human bones in the open valley, and lo, they were very dry. And he said to me, Son of man, can these bones live? And I answered, O oh Lord God, you know. Again he said to me, Prophesy to these bones and say to them, O oh dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God to these bones, Behold, I will make breath enter you, so that you may come to life. I will put sinew on you and make flesh grow back on you. Cover you with skin and I will put breath in you so that you may come to life. And you will know that I am the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's jump and go to verse 11 which says, Then he said to me, Son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel. Behold, they say, our bones are dried up and our hope is lost. We are completely cut off. Therefore prophesy and say to them, that says the Lord God, behold, I will open your graves and make you come up out of your graves, my people, and I will bring you back home to the land of Israel. Then you will know with confidence that I am the Lord, when I have opened your graves and made you come up of your graves, my people, I will put my spirit in you and you will come to life and I will place you in your own land. Then you will know that I, the Lord, have spoken and fulfilled it, says the Lord. Hallelujah. Let us thank the word of God. Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for your mercy to find us, ourselves in your house. So we know, Lord, as we are here, you will renew us. You will reconnect us to you. Let this word bear fruit that shall give glory to your name. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can I read again in verse 11? It says, then he said to me, son of man, these bones are like the whole house of Israel. Behold, they say, our bones are are dried up and our hope is lost. We are completely cut off. Hallelujah. Tell your neighbor and say it's not over. Tell your neighbor like you know and you mean what you're saying and say it is not over. Hallelujah. When we are reading, we are reading in the book of Ezekiel. Ezekiel here is saying that the hand of the Lord reached him one day and picked him up and placed him in the middle of a valley 
where everything around him was dried up and was dead. The Bible says the valley which was, he was in, it was full of dry bones. Meaning where God placed Ezekiel at that moment, there was no more life. There was no more movement. There was no more action. There was nothing that suggests prosperity. And there was nothing that suggests a way forward. The Bible says it was dry bones. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Bible says, God said to Ezekiel, can these bones live again? And Ezekiel said, only you God knows. And the Bible says, speak over these bones and say, I will cover your bones with flesh. I will breathe in you and you will come back to life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Ezekiel is like me and you today as children of God in this life we are living in. You might find yourself today in a valley of dry bones. But I am here to announce to you and to tell you that it is not yet over. The fact that wherever you are, there is nothing that suggests prosperity or life to you. It does not mean it's the end of the road. In as much as God said to Ezekiel, speak over these bones and say, there will be flesh that will cover you. Muscles will grow out of you. On top of that, I will breathe a breath of life unto you. And you will come back to a living being. The Bible says in verse 11, he said to Ezekiel, what I am showing you, it's like the children of Israel. They said, we have dried up. We have lost hope. What I am saying to you is like the children of Cherries who said, I am dried up. I have lost hope. I have been in the house of God for long. I have been serving God the best way I know how to. But at this point, everything that suggests life is no more to me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I have come with a good message to tell you. It is not yet over. Those dry bones in that valley, they are waiting for you to speak life so that they come back to life. Hallelujah. Don't forget the Bible says the power of life and death is in our tongue. And the Bible says in Romans that whatever we speak into existence, God brings to manifestations. Meaning where you are, you need to speak the word of God and bring your situation back to life. Don't allow yourself to be a dead child of God who is in the kingdom, who is not effective to anybody around you, even to yourself. As a child of God, we know that the book of Romans says everything works for good to those who are called by the Lord and who are loved by him. Meaning you being in the valley of dry bones, it's not a mistake. It's a situation that is waiting for you to activate the word of God and bring it back to life. That's why I'm saying to you in that valley of dry bones, it is not yet over. I know there are situations that are suggesting it is already over for you. The time has already gone by. There is nothing that you can do. You can imagine dry bones. It means those bones have been there for a very long time. And everything that suggests life to those bones, it's already gone. There is nothing that you can bring up back scientifically, anyhow, magically, or anyhow you can think of. There is nothing that you can see except death. Hence is the valley of dry bones. If it were me and you, we were going to say, our oh, God, these bones can never come back to life. But I love the answer of Ezekiel when he answered. He said, oh God, you are the only one who knows. Why? Because Ezekiel knew and he understood that God is he alone, the author and the finisher of life. If he has not said yet it is over, it is not yet over. Until he declares it is over for you, it is not yet over. It's not a matter of whether your situation is suggesting what to you. Even if the enemy comes to you and say it is over, remember child of God, he has not said it is over, therefore it is not over. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Remember in Isaiah, he said, I knew you before I formed you in your mother's wombs. And I set you aside and predestined you. Therefore, where you are, 
are in the valley of dry bones. Until he alone comes and says it is over, it is not yet over. David said, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil for thou art with me. Hallelujah. It means at that moment where David was walking, it was the end of the road according to human psychology. Where David was at that point, there was no way forward. He had tried everything men possible that you know how to. He has done everything that you know how to do. Still, it didn't work. And he had to remind himself that I, he, there is the Lord who is with me all the days of my life. There is God who has a purpose upon my life, who's still running it, who's still planning it, who's still working in my life for me to reach his desired end. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Bible says where we read, in this, these bones were so many. Because Ezekiel says they were like a great mighty, mighty army. It means those bones have been there for a long time and it has been the bones of many people. According to human flesh and knowledge, if you see such things, you see a state of impossibility. According to our standard of thinking and of making things, when you see such things, you see the end of the road. You start preparing yourself for the worst. Why? Because everything before you is suggesting the end. Everything before you is suggesting death. Everything before you is showing you is the end. Everything before you is saying prepare yourself for death for your days are over. But I am here to announce to you it is not yet over. He who has begun the good work in you is still able to bring it to pass. Don't, rem don't forget that the Bible says the earth is working, the world is waiting for your manifestation, you alone. There is something in this world that God has placed you for, that before you exit this world, you must have bring, brought it to, to pass. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This is not a matter of what statistics is suggesting. It's not a matter of what your life or your neighbor or your family is suggesting. It's not a matter of what your colleagues or your business members are thinking of you. It is not about what your company policies are suggesting you. It's about what God has spoken and what he wants to do with your life. It's a matter of where God is taking you in this life. It's a matter of the journey that is set in front of you. Hallelujah. 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 The Bible says, God says to Ezekiel, prophesy and say, flesh will cover you. Breath of life will fill you. And you will come out back to life. And the Bible says, after that, God said, it's like the children of Israel. They have lost hope. You are tired. You are weary. You are exhausted. You've done all there is to do. The problem is in us doing all there is to do, we forget that there is the author and the finisher. There is the one who orders your footsteps. There is the one who has predestined you. There is the one who has a great plan upon your life. And in all these things, all we had to do was to speak life. And say, in the name of Jesus, I call you back to life, my job. In the name of Jesus, I call my business back to life. In the name of Jesus, I call my desires back to life. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Tell your neighbor and say, it is not yet over. Although you have lost hope. Remember in Romans, it says hope does not disappoint. How do you lose hope when you serve a God who does not disappoint? The God who says in Hebrew that if you seek me diligently, I will reward you. Hallelujah. It means it's only a matter of time for the situation around me to come back to life. It only needs me to take faith and speak for a word of life to my dead situation. It comes back to life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
Let us look at the life of Job. The Bible says Job was a faithful and blameless man in the sight of God. Job chapter 1 verse, from verse 1. And the Bible says one day the angels were gathering in heaven and Satan came along. And when Satan came along, God asked, have you seen my faithful servant Job? The one who's upright and blameless? You see how much confidence God has in you? Have you seen my servant Tendo? The one who's upright and blameless in my sight? And the devil says, I know. Do you think Job is fearing you for nothing? It's because you are protecting him. But look at this. Look at this child of God. Job asked a permission from God. And said, allow me to prove to you that Job is not faithful to you. Allow me to destroy him. And watch him insult you to your face. I love God. God in confidence said, go ahead. I'm giving you permission. Go ahead. But don't touch his soul. I can, I can imagine the devil that day when he left the presence of the Lord. He was rejoicing. Finally, I now have permission. Remember, the enemy had to obtain permission before he attacked Job. Meaning your situation is not a coincidence. God knows you are able to come out of it. He knows that that devil that is coming behind you is already under your feet. He knows that you are a child of grace and his grace is sufficient for you. The Bible says when Satan left the presence of God, he went to Job. In one day, the Bible says, the enemy destroyed everything. Everything Job had was done in a day. In a matter of hours. The Bible says his children were feasting in the elder brother's house. As they were feasting, a wind came, blew the house. It fell on top of all of them. Ten kids died instantly. Only one person was left to come and give the report. Another one was in the field with sheep. Fire from nowhere just came and consumed them, all of them. Only one shepherd was left to come and give the report. Everything, every livestock, every house, everything Job had died in hours. And here you are, you are complaining about a retirement letter they gave you. And you are forgetting the kind of God you have that says my plans are higher than your, than your plans. I'm not like a son of man to change my mind about what I said about you. What I have spoken about you, when I made you, when I formed you, I'm still holding on to the same words. And I will carry you to your old age. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Just like Ezekiel, Job didn't insult God. After all his children died, his livestock, his riches vanished. God, Job never insulted God. Job went to God and say, from my mother's womb I came without nothing and I will return to the soil with nothing. God, I thank you. Job knew the kind of God he's serving. He knew that he is serving a God who speaks things out of existence and they appear in reality. He knows that his trust is not in men in chariots, but his trust is in the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. After the enemy destroyed everything, he was very sure and con convinced that Job has, has reached his cul-de-sac, the end of the road. Dryness, desert, unemployment, penniless, sickness, death warrants and death certificates are given to a child of God. The enemy rejoiced that it is the end of a child of God. But there is a scripture that says, my grace is sufficient for you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
There is a scripture in Isaiah 46 that says, I am carrying you like a baby in my hands. I have carried you from the beginning and even to the last end, I will carry you. Meaning even if God has given the enemy permission over my life or over your life to end your source of livelihood, God knows it is not yet over. What is left is for you to know as child of God, even if I have, I have reached my valley of dry bones, it is not yet over. As long as he still sits on the throne, it is not yet over. Even if you can say my sickness is leading to death, I'm left with a few months to live. He is the giver of life. He said in John that they that believe in me shall have life in abundance. Therefore, it is not yet over. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There's a song that says, Basheshe Bathega. Basheshe Bachabula. Behind the scene is rearranging your life for greatness. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I am here to remind you, child of God, that until God says it is over, you are going nowhere. Let that job end. Let that business come to an end. Let that sickness be a threat to you. Let the devil do his worst until Jaira says it's over. It's not yet over. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. There are moments in life that you look at yourself and you start praying that God grant me the grace to enter your kingdom because where I am, I don't see a way forward. There are moments in life where you look at your situation and you say, Jagad, it's one little baba. Because it looks like your own is the worst that has ever happened to mankind. I am here to remind you, be like Abraham, who believed the promises of God. The word of God says all promises are yes and in Christ they are amen. Amen means it is so. Let it be so. It means that whatever God has spoken concerning my life, it's going to be so. Regardless of the situation, regardless of the triangles I'm meeting, regardless of what I am coming across, regardless of what I am even suggesting to myself, all promises are yes. And in Christ, they are amen. amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. We need Christians like Ezekiel and Job who knows the kind of God they are serving. Christians who knows that my, the Bible says my no is a no and my yes is a yes. Christians who are able to stand against the enemy and remind them that I am the able of God's eye. No harm said my father will befall me. Even if you can come to my right or my left, even if you can bring an army of thousands but my father said no harm shall befall me no harm shall befall me hallelujah hallelujah we are living in an era or in a time where we need Christians who know the kind of God they are serving children of God who sing about Baiza children of God who sing about Libala the kind of God who saved them the Bible says we were bought by a precious blood this Jesus hanged on the cross of Calvary. The Bible says they pierced his side, blood gushed out to the point that even water started coming out of him. Hallelujah. So the very same precious blood that bought you has a purpose over your life. Don't allow the enemy to discourage you. Don't allow things around you to suggest otherwise. Hold on to the word of God and remind yourself, I am a child of the king. I am a heir of heaven. I am a royal priesthood. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Tell your neighbor and say, it is not yet over. It is not yet over. Open to me in 2 Kings chapter 4. Second Kings chapter 4 verse 1. 
Can I read? It says, now one of the wives of a man of the sons of the prophets cried out to Elisha for help, saying, your servant, my husband, is dead. And you know that your servant reverently feared the Lord. But the creditor is coming to take my two sons to be his slaves in payment for a loan. Elisha said to her, what shall I do for you? Ask your neighbor, what do you want God to do for you? What shall I do for you? Tell me, what do you have of value in your house? She said, your maid servant has nothing in the house except a small jar of olive oil. Then he said, go, borrow containers from all your neighbors, empty containers and not just a few. Then you shall go in and shut the door behind you and your sons and pour out the oil you have into all these containers and you shall set aside each one when it is full. So she left him and shut the door behind her and her sons when they were bringing, they, they were bringing her the containers as she poured the oil. Verse 6, when the containers were full, she said to her son, Bring me another container. And they said to her, there is not one left. Ask your neighbor, what do you want God to do for you? This is the story of a woman who just lost her husband. Her source of joy. She just lost the provider that she trusted. She just lost the one person that meant everything to her. Worst case scenario, when her husband died, her hus he had a loan that he had taken from somebody. And the Bible says, this woman is telling the man of God, Elisha, that the debtor is coming to collect my sons. So that they can be slaves to pay up for the debt their father had with him. You can imagine the source of frustration this woman had. The same source of frustration you would have when they tell you, we are retrenching people in this company. So you might be one of them. Or they tell you, no, you have sim symptoms of a certain disease. We are not yet sure we are still going to make tests. Or they tell you, no, we cannot do this business with you because your papers are not in order. Or you, are not, you don't look like a trustworthy person to do business with. And at that point, what they are telling you or denying you is the last hope you were holding on to. The Bible says, this woman ran to the man of God and said, man of God, this is my situation. The man of God said, what do you have in your hands? She said, I have nothing but a little jar of olive oil. What do you have in your hands? I have nothing except my faith. What do you have in your hands? I have nothing except Jesus. The Bible says the man of God said, send your sons to go and borrow containers from your neighbors. And not just little containers. They must borrow them in a large quantity. I want you to look at something. The prophet said to her, when after they borrow, get into your house and shut the door with your sons behind you. Remember you serve a God that works in the background, but when the results come, they come out in public. He says, when you seek me, I will reward you. Where? In public, where everybody's doing, is seeing you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The man of God said, enter your house with your sons and close the door behind you. Meaning, enter your sacred place with your sons and let nobody see you. Because whatever you do in secret, it shall come out to the light. And when it comes out to the light, it must give glory to his name. The Bible said she went in with her son and she closed the door. I love this part of the scripture. We said she started pouring the little jar of olive oil. She started pouring from one cup to the next cup 
to the next jar, to the next jar, to the next jar. The, the very same little olive oil, the very same small faith like a mustard seed, it carried her from grace unto grace, unto grace, unto grace. The, the very same little olive oil, the Bible says she poured into jars until she said, bring me another one. And the son says, we don't have another. Meaning the oil was, it was flowing and flowing and flowing. Why? Because it was behind closed doors. Let's stop being Christians that are in front of people's eyes. Let's be Christians that are found behind closed doors. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Are you with me, somebody? Let us stop being Christians who portray Christianity during the daylight when people can see you. And in the dark behind closed doors, we are hathen. What do you have in your hand? I have Jesus. Enter into your closet with your Jesus and pray to him with supplication and thanksgiving. Make your prayer request made known unto God. Hallelujah. Where behind closed doors, right in the valley of the midst of dry bones, right when they have already written you off and they say there is nothing good that will come out of you. Remember these words, they don't start with you. They started with Jesus when he was born. And when they heard that a king is born in Nazareth and somebody had to ask, is there anything good that will come out of Nazareth? The same Jesus, we call him Jesus Christ of Nazareth. The same question they ask you, Mwanasi Mamang is celebrating a job and they say, is there anything good will come out of that family? Hmm? Is there anything good that will come out of it? And the truth is, every dry bone next to you suggests no. But they forget. The same way the devil forgot when he attacked Job. That it is God who blessed Job in the first place. And it was God who said, go ahead and take everything concerning him. But don't touch his soul. Don't forget the Bible says, after you took everything, the same devil still came back and said, Marajob is not insulting you. God still asked the same question. Have you seen my faithful and blameless servant, Job? He says, ah, no, it's because he's fine in health. God says, go and take his health as well. And he comes and he takes, he takes your job. The thing we do as children of God, the minute it takes your job, we sit in ashes in front of everyone. And we let the world know. And we start misquoting scriptures that at that point are not even effective to you. Let alone to the person who's listening. You start rebuking the devil you didn't see. And you forget that nothing in your life happens by mistake. Everything in your life is ordained and predestined. Whatever you are coming across, God has put a stamp and say, yes, let it be so. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. After God put a stamp, the, the devil stole Job's health. Just like the devil stole the husband of this woman. Everything she believed in. It means her sons were not working. It means she was not working. Today, if it was today's world, we would say he was the breadwinner. The devil took the very same breadwinner. Now her children, as a mother, she's crying. My children has to pay the debt that their father made when he's still alive. Now that he's gone, I don't even know how to pay it. But look at what God used. A little jar of olive oil. The same way the Bible says, if you have faith as small as a mustard seed, you can say to this mountain, be thou removed and be cast into a sea. 
and the mountain is removed. The problem is magician, and we want the kind of faith, not as small as a master said, we want the kind of faith that the world will see and look at and say, wow. They are God is really working. And we forget our job is to get behind closed doors with our children and the small faith we have and our Jesus and we close the door and we call on this God. Not on social media platforms. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Not where? On social media platforms. Quoting scriptures that they don't even work for myself. Before your, the scripture I'm quoting works for you, it must firstly work in me. Why? Because I quote it behind closed doors, not in front of people. Ask your neighbor and say, what do you have in your hands? Because it is not yet over. Until God himself says it is over with you. Come home, it is not yet over. Regardless of what you are coming up, don't lose your faith because of what you are seeing with your naked eyes. Hold on to Jesus, the author and the finisher of your faith. He who has promised you, the Bible says, is faithful to bring to completion the good work he has started in you. I once heard somebody speaking and saying, we don't trust this God. Because of situation and because they are convincing. But we trust him because he is faithful. But because himself, Utembekile. Because he does not fail. He has never failed anyone. Therefore, he can never fail you. What do you have in your hands? Because it's not yet. It's not yet over. Tell your neighbor and say, it is not yet over. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It is not yet over. The Bible says she poured and poured and poured and poured. Until every jar was full. And that's when it did what? It stopped. And the Bible says, she went back to the very same man of God. And said, man of God, I've poured into jars. So what do I do? The Bible says, man of God said, sell it. Pay your debt. And the rest, live on it. You see how simple the instruction of God is? Get behind your closed door. And close it behind you. It means your focus is no longer the door, but it's whatever that is in front of you. After you've done that, call on your Jesus with the small faith you have in your hand. And watch him work and keep pouring and pouring and pouring in your life until you run over. Hallelujah. 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 As children of God, if we can learn that is not over and we learn that what is important is our secret place with the Lord. Not our public display with the people, but our secret place with the Lord. We will then know that it is him alone who sustains me. And if he has allowed me to go through this sickness, and if he has allowed me to go through this discomfort, it means there is something he's teaching me and there is something he's pruning in my life. All I have to do is just to keep on holding on to my Jesus behind my closed doors. And I allow him to work in the back scene so that when the product comes out in public, I will then fulfill the scripture that says, for I am more than the conqueror in Christ Jesus. We say we are more than conquerors, but we are in front of people's eyes. What is requested of us 
We don't want to be in the secret place behind closed doors where nobody sees us. We want to be in the public eye where it is all convincing. We want to be in a valley of roses so that people can take photos and make memories and people can say, wow, it's really going for them. We don't want to be in the valley of dry bones. We don't want to find ourselves in situation that God has allowed us to be in. Remember the Bible says, I will not give a temptation that is above your ability to bear. Meaning when God agrees for that situation to come, he knows very well that you are able to handle it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Are you still with me, somebody? God knows very well that you are able to do what? To handle it. I don't want us to read a lot of scriptures because of time. In the very same chapter of 2 Kings chapter 4, when you go down with it, there's a story of a Shunammite woman who lost her son. I love verse 22, that when she was asked by her husband, what is wrong? She said, all is well. How many of us today can say, all is well? How many of us today can sincerely say, all is well? The Bible said the Shunammite woman didn't have a child. The same man of God, Elisha, spoke a word and said, next year this time, you will give birth to a child. Indeed, she gave birth to a son. After a couple of years, the same son passed away. And when she was asked... I, I want you to visualize this. When she was asked by her husband, the father of the child, this one that you want to go to the man of God, what is wrong? Look at her answer. It is well. When the enemy is asking you, I'm not saying her husband was the enemy, but when your enemy is asking you, or when your friends are asking you, what is going on? You fail to say, it is well. All is well. Why? Because there is a God that I call upon behind closed doors. That you can't see with your naked eyes. The Bible says after she said it is well, she ran to the man of God. How many of us remember the house of God when we are going down the drain? How many of us remember the house of God when all suggest death and loss. Some of us, we start picking phones and start calling and letting the world know. How could that person do this to me? You, we start lashing out. We start venting, using today's English. We start venting to people. How can this person do this to me? And you forget... When you have faith as small as a mustard seed, you can say to this mountain, be thou removed. And it is removed. It all depends on what are you having in your hand. Ask your neighbor, what are you having in your hand? The Shunammite woman had the word of God that the prophet gave her, that you shall bear a son for your husband. Even when the devil snatched away the son, she still held the same word. You will bear a son for your husband. Even when they said you can't have this job, you still believe that God said this is my job. You still hold on to the word. Even when they are saying you are not worthy to be married in this family, you still hold on the word that nobody shall separate what the Lord has joined together. Even when they say you cannot have children, you still hold on the word that says that like the Hebrew woman you shall bring forth kids. There shall be no barren in the land. Even if they say you have a deadly disease, you have a few months to live, you still hold on to the word that I am saving the Lord, Jaira who is my healer. What are you having in your hand? It is not yet over. Until he comes and says it is time to come home. It is not yet over. 
It doesn't matter how much they are witching you, how much they are planning against you, how much they are strategizing against you, how much they are making meetings about you. What matters is what God says. Let them carry on with their meetings. Let them carry on with sleepless nights. Since they don't want to sleep like normal people, let them carry on criticizing you. Let them carry on undermining you. Let them carry on bad-mouthing you. While they are bad-mouthing you and busy with your life, God is equally busy with your own life behind closed doors. And what matters is that it is what God will do that will shine out the most. Remember David said, after he has been in the valley, he said, you prepare a table before me right in the presence of my enemies. You know why I love I love that scripture because even after everything you've done, God still gives you a VIP invitation Amen. to come and show off and showcase about my life. Even even if you had said it is over, Still, God gives you an invitation and say, come and see what I want to do with my child. Come and behold what I'm about to do in this one's life. Don't hear what people are saying, but come and witness yourself. He prepares a table before me, before you. Meaning in the preparation of the table, you are doing nothing. You are just sitting and watching. Which is one thing we fail to do as children of God is to sit down and watch and let God handle it. While they are laughing, you are sitting and he's preparing the table. Right in their presence. When he's busy putting the centerpieces and the forks and the knives, they are there. And you know what? They are equally ready to partake from the table. That's why he prepares it before you in their presence. So that tomorrow they will be able to say, Why? Because during the preparation of the table, they were there. They didn't hear by hearsay. They were there. First hand witnesses. Hallelujah. 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 I wish we can be like the people of the Bible. Like I'm saying to you, God invites your enemies when he's blessing you. Look at how he turned around the story of Job. In Job 42. The Bible says God blessed Job double what he had. It even further went and said, there were no daughters as beautiful as Job's daughters. God still gave him the ten children he had. But Basela, this time, give him massive utana fela. And everything he had was twice what he had. Hallelujah. Remember that scripture that said, I will restore the years that were eaten by the locusts. I will return them. Just like Ezekiel spoke life to dry bones. Dry bones came people who became an army. Ready for war. With no training. Eh? With no three months things that they give in companies. They were ready for war. God bless Job, and Job was the most wealthiest man in his time. The same God who provided for the woman who was in debt. Her debt was removed, and she carried on living with her sons. It means she didn't even need to go and look for a job, or her children didn't have to, to look for a job. The same God who brought back the child of the Shunammite woman back to life. It's the same God you are serving today. 
That's why I said I am here to announce to you that until Jehovah Jireh says it is over, it is not yet over. Whatever the enemy is planning against you shall not work against you. Read your Romans 8 from verse 35. He said, what can separate me from the love of God? Is it hunger? Is it strife? But nothing, not even angels, can separate you. From the love of God. Open Romans 8. Hmm. Hallelujah. Romans 8 from 35. I want it... I want us to read it together. Hallelujah. Can we read together? It says, let's read. Who shall ever separate us from the love of Christ? Will tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword? Read verse 37. It says, Yet in all these things, we are what? Read, 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 read it, reading it for yourself. Yet in all these things, I am more than a conqueror and gain an overwhelming victory through him who loved us so much that he died for us. I love 38 that says, for I am convinced. Say to your neighbor, I'm convinced. For I am convinced and continue to be convinced beyond any doubt. That neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, no things present, no threatening, no things to come, no powers, no height, no depth, no any other created thing will be able to separate us from the unlimited love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. What can separate you from the love of God? He who wipes away your tears. He who provides all your needs. He who heals all your diseases. He who knows what you need before you open your mouth. He who knows your desires and grant them to you. He who called you by name and said you are my own. What can separate you from him? Nothing. Therefore, it is not over. Therefore, it is not over. Therefore, it is not over. Why? Because not even principalities, not even powers, not even height or depth can ever separate me from the love of God. Because I am the apple of his eye. It is not yet over. Ask your neighbor, what are you coming across? What are you missing? What are you meeting today? It is not yet over. I didn't come with a long message. I just came to tell you it is not yet over. Even when the devil says it is over, it is not yet over. El Roy is still on the throne. It is not yet over. Even when they say your sickness is uncurable, it's not yet over. Even when they say your job is finished, it's not yet over. Even when they say God cannot bless you, it is not yet over. Why? Because he alone has called me by name. Ask your neighbor and say, what is your name? If your name is Joyce, it means God said, Joyce, you are my own. I loved you and I have prepared you for my work. The dry bones you are seeing does not say it's over. Stop telling yourself it's over when God has not said it's over. Life and death is in the power of your tongue. 
call your situation back to life and say, I am a child of God. The Bible says, by his stripes, I am healed. God says that he provides all my needs according to his glorious riches in Christ. Why? Because it is not yet over. When you know it's not over, you see possibilities from impossibilities. That's why you will be able to say, Hi, Sally Ampitela. Why? Because it's not the I that needs to convince me that God is working. Remember, Corinthians said, No eye have seen, no ear have heard, no heart has conceived yet what God has for those who love him. Nobody has heard of the kind of miracle you are about to display. Nobody has heard of the kind of business you are about to do. Nobody has an idea the kind of inventor you are about to turn out to be. Nobody has ever known or thought the kind of businessman you will be. The kind of mother you will be. A mother amongst mothers. A mother of nations. Hallelujah. 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 A mighty man of valor. Nobody has heard. They might think they've heard. They might think they know. They might think they've concluded because they have miscalculated and they think they've reached the desired solution or answer. I am here to announce to you today that no matter the calculations the devil has done over you, until God says it is over, it is not yet over. Tell that situation it is not yet over. Tell that condition it is not yet over. Tell that sickness it is not yet over. Why? Because I am the beloved of the Lord. He says he orders my footsteps and everywhere I go he has agreed that I go. He said in his word that a thousand may fall at my left and ten thousand on my right but no harm. Lamb shall befall me. Why? Because it is not yet over. It's not over until Jonah says it's over. Come sickness, come sunshine. The Bible says when the enemy comes in like a flood, the spirit of the Lord shall raise up the standard. Why? It is not yet over. When the Egyptians are right behind you, coming to you with chariots, and the Red Sea is right in front of you, don't be afraid, don't dismay, child of God. Why? Because he's God who makes a way. Out of no way, the God who parted the Red Sea and you cross over on dry land. Why it is not over? <laughs> Tell your neighbor it's not over. But well, let them go to their jobs of peanuts while you are sitting at home. Let them call you Mashalela because you are trusting God. Let them call you a fool because you are calling on Jaira. But lo and behold, child of God, right in the midst of the valleys of dry bones, there is still life. Why? Because the Bible says in John that those that believe in me, out of them rivers of living waters shall flow of their bellies. Why? Because it's not over. Because when he comes to me, he comes with life in abundance. It's not over. What are you meeting today? What is your situation suggesting today? It is not over. Let them call you Lefit, but it is not yet over. The Bible says in Isaiah, when the time is right, I, the Lord, will make it happen. Hallelujah! Because it is not yet over. When the time is right, not when their time is right, when my time, meet the author and the finisher of, my, of your faith, meet the creator of heaven and earth he who was in the beginning and still is to the end says it is not yet over 
Hallelujah. Don't look at your situation today and suggest to yourself it's over. When the devil is crawling and coming to you to whisper to you because the Bible says the enemy comes to steal, to kill you and to destroy you. But tell the enemy when he comes and say, get thee behind me, Satan. Why? Because it's not yet over. God said it. The world is waiting for the manifestation of the sons and daughters of the most high God. I have not yet manifested. I have not yet invested. I have not yet invented. I have not yet become a millionaire. Therefore it is not over. I am not yet healed. It is not yet over. I am not yet rich. It is not yet over. My family is not yet saved. It is not yet over. Why? Because it is not yet over. All I need is my Jesus. And I get behind closed doors. And I seek him with all my heart and my soul. And he says, whatever I do behind closed doors, he will reward me in public. Where everybody is seeing. Where everybody has already overruled me. Where everybody has already labeled me. Where everybody has already buried me. Do you know that people bury you when you are still alive? Because you are not walking and doing things according to their statistics. And according to how they believe and see things. But listen to me, child of God. The Bible says we don't walk by sight. But we walk by faith. Why? Because we serve a God who is a spirit and a God who works by behind closed doors when nobody can see. But the Bible says victory, it is ours. Why? Because we are more than what conquerors. Hallelujah. It is not yet over. Stand up and tell three people it is not yet over. It is not yet over. It is not yet over. Like Job, I will speak and say, though weeping may endure for the night, but joy comes in the morning. It is only the dawning of a brand new day. It is only the beginning of a new era. The same tender you knew yesterday is not the same tender today. Why? Because I'm walking in a different level with the Lord. Because it is not yet over with me. He who has called me is not yet done with me. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I love the song. Bayege Bashege. Bayege Bachaboli. Hallelujah. Moba Bashashi Levele Bashek. Bashashi Levele Bashek. Because where God is taking you, remember, no eye have seen, no ear have heard. No heart has conceived yet what God is about to do in your life. You are an atomic bomb waiting for explosion. That is hidden somewhere in the closet. That is waiting for the appropriate time. The time that God will say it's time for you to get up and showcase and show forth my mighty works. And be a bomb to nations and generations. Listen child of God, you are not only called for yourselves. But you are called because God has trusted millions and nations and generations to call on him through your life. Therefore, remember you have too much of a load to give up now. You have too much of a work to let go at this point. You have too much of an assignment to let the devil win. Tell yourself, I am a child of God. I am above and not beneath. I am a beloved of the Lord. I'm the apple of his eye. He has called me by name. Why? Because he has set me apart for a peculiar work. Therefore, it is not over. It is not over. Let us all stand up. Tell your neighbor, it is not over. The Bible says, Lema koko koko alona. 
That's why we were saying the song, for thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory. Not only now, but forever and ever and ever. Why? Because you are the alpha and the omega. You are the beginning and the end. You are the first and the last. You are he who created the earth from nothing into what it is today. You are still he who will stand until the end. It is not over. Tell your neighbor, it is not over. <coughs> Hallelujah. I know there are things in your life that look impossible. You might be saying to yourself, what is Masimono talking about? Does she know the valley that I'm in? Does she know the deep end that I'm in? The kind of depths that I have? The kind of disease that I, work, I have? Remember David said, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, thou art with me every step of the way. Meaning I'm not a mistake or a coincidence. Why? Because I am a child of God. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. In that valley, it is not yet over. In that disappointment, it is not yet over. In that miscarriage, it's not yet over. It's not over. In that rejection, it's let them reject you for the glory of the Lord. So that when after he has refined you and he made you what he wants you to be, they will give glory to his holy name. Why it is not over? You are still alive. Everything about you still has breath. You are still living. You are still working. You are full of potential and abilities. Possibilities are galore. It's not over. It is not over. Let us lift up our hands. <coughs> I want us to go and pray. Lord, help me to hold on to the Jesus I have in my hand. Open your mouth and pray. It is not over. Pray from victory. It is not over. It is not yet over. It is not yet over. Pray. Open your mouth and pray. It is not yet over. It is not yet over. It is not yet over. Pray, pray. It is not yet over. It's not the end of the road for you. It's not the end of the road for you. This is just the beginning of another level. A beginning of another dimension. A beginning of another journey. Another level God is trusting you with. It is not yet over. Pray with all your heart, it is not yet over. It's not over, it's not over. It's not the end of the road for you. It's not the end of the road for you. It is not the end of the road for you. It's not the end of the road for you. It's not the end of the road. It's not the end of the road. It's not yet over. It's not yet over. Come on, clap your hands and begin to thank God for a new strength. 
clap your hands and give, begin to give him praise for a new strength, for a new journey. Clap your hands, clap your hands, clap your hands and give him praise. 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 Clap your hands and thank him for a new strength. Clap your hands and thank him because it's not yet over. It's not yet over, it's not yet over. Clap your hands, clap your hands and give him glory. Thank him for his goodness and his grace. He has carried you this far and to your end he will carry you. It is not yet over, it is not yet over. It is not yet the end, it's not yet over. It is not yet over. It is not yet over, it's not yet over. It is not yet over. Come on, clap your hands and give him praise. Clap your hands and thank him. Give him glory, exalt him, he's worthy. Come on, shout somebody and magnify him. 